He's written a book that serves as an accessibility guide to San Francisco and the surrounding region. Believe it or not, the guy with the dogs is a Kiwi. Great ramp. Just one of Bonnie's initiatives. This park at the foot of the Golden Gate Bridge is something she's really proud of. So Bonnie, you've battled so long to get where you are now. What is your actual mission? My mission? Well, I would say actually I am more of a follower than a leader. Um, at least if I'm a leader, it's more of a quiet leader. My mission is to make the planet, well, I'll start a little smaller, but make at least um, part of the world more accessible to people with disabilities and more accepting and to be able to participate in all parts of life. It seems like a pretty simple thing, but a big task. I start from the premise that people don't intentionally discriminate, that it's just their lack of information that, that creates that situation. How have you overcome some of these barriers? What's the process? Well, you know, part of it is picking and choosing your battles. Because if I were to go around all day constantly educating people and fighting, it would be exhausting and wouldn't really be a whole lot of fun. So I think I concentrate on things that matter to me and that are important and that I think um, can have the greatest impact. After leaving Bonnie, the boys and I headed downtown to the district known for those amazing steep streets. This one is so steep, they make you wind your way around it to slow you down. Boys being boys, we just couldn't come to San Francisco and not live out our dreams now, could we? That was Lombard Street. Steepest, windiest street in the world. I'm gonna need a new set of gloves after that. And I might have to check my pants. The crew blocked the street and Chris and I went for it. Alrighty, now for a race. It's not really fair because Chris has much better hand function. Hey, the finish line, you win. Uh, you can stop now. 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 San Francisco was fantastic. Definitely one of the friendliest cities I've ever been to. But today, we want to leave you with a story that's very much a tale of love. It's the story of Manu and Margaret. Margaret has Alzheimer's, a disease that slowly causes the brain to lose memory and function, sometimes over decades. And it's the carers left to face an ever increasing load. Manu's love for Margaret hasn't diminished one single heartbeat, but he is learning to ask for support for him and his wife. These are just some of the faces of Alzheimer's. None of them have the disease, but their loved ones do. They care for partners, husbands, wives, mums and dads, and they're trying to learn more about how to cope. The trouble is this, that when that starts, you don't feel like commit yourself because you're hoping that it's going to get away, go away. Still in denial of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was quite alarmed. My daughter kept saying, Dad, you joined this. I said, look, give me time. Let go slowly. Because you don't, you know, you're not prepared. You sort of, you feel um, sort of sad for yourself and yes. you're trying, hoping that something will happen, a miracle or something. Manu Alai now knows there are no miracles when dealing with Alzheimer's. His wife of five decades, Margaret, has been slipping into dementia for seven years. He's developed his own ways of coping, often using her love of singing just to get the chores done. Anything vacuuming or anything, you can't sort of keep eye on two things. So I put the CD on and ask her, would you like to sing? And she, very happy, she stands there's about 48 tunes, <laughs> tunes in that so she sings along with them and I go and do the lawn or vacuuming or anything like that and I walk back and forth and see what 
number of the tune is on, I might have to repeat it again if I haven't finished my work. But as Margaret's needs increase, Manu's own quality of life decreases. Concerned for their father's health, his family has urged him to seek help. Manu's entitled to 50 days respite care each year, but he is fiercely independent, believing his wife is his responsibility. Only recently has he accepted that his health could suffer, so he's now taken advantage of the time out that respite offers. He was still at a stage where he didn't, I mean, I don't, you know, the, the full realisation of the situation I don't think really had hit. If we went back two years, he wouldn't have been ready for any of this really. I think it's just barely been in the last year. Right. Daughter Pari is with Margaret today, so Manu can go to the course. Simple tasks like making a cup of tea together and setting the table for a family lunch are a challenge. Put that one in the pantry over there. No, the pantry. Yeah, yeah. I have to be there 24 hours because it's as some for it, she likes to do things because she's been doing it for example she says I want to have a cup of tea and if they will go and put the jug on she might do it but then the boils up pours the hot water on different things that or can't find the tea so you have to be uh, keeping an eye on her need to fill it up that'll do now go right to the top more. That's it, okay. This morning we were getting ready to go for filming of this program and I showered her and blow dried her hair and everything and just put the toothpaste on the toothbrush, gave it to her, I turned my around and here she was putting the t toothpaste on her hair so I had to put her again under the, her head under the ba hand basin and clean it up. Some d sometimes it's really easy and other times no. No, it's very difficult. Well, then, then we end in, a, in irritable, angry, and then it ends up in a confrontational type situation. And then I feel guilty because I think, oh, this is not doing the, the dementia any good. Or me, mm. yes. Mm. yes. Yeah, or me. This week, course director Mary Lythe is leading a discussion on feelings. Over six weeks, the carers have discovered how dementia affects the brain, the stages of dementia, and more importantly, what coping tools carers need. But it is a very isolating disease, and so they learn that they've got to ask for help and do the co-caring. You can't do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just all by yourself. Gradually, Manu is venturing outside the home. He's back playing bowls and belongs to an internet study group, but he still finds it hard to spend time away from Margaret. He feels she has always been there for him. I used to call her my rock in the olden days because on the farm she really supported me. And if I needed somebody to drive a tractor for me to do that, I said, yeah, would you like to drive and come home? Dinner was ready, everything. She'd cook for the kids, send the kids to school. And when you see what sort of thing she did, compare what man, man, uh, my role was, is it was like this. And now that I'm taking that role, I really appreciate the years that she looked after us and the family. Margaret struggles to remember those days. And that, you know this nice, beautiful girl here? No, I don't know that one oh, at all. That's the girl that I fell in love with. Somebody I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a good one to put on, isn't it? It was a fairy tale love match. Manu was a handsome agriculture student from Persia, now Iran, and Margaret, a pretty Kiwi student nurse. 53 years on, a failing memory hasn't diminished their love. The most important thing to learn that that, that's a, is a person. And you love her, and although she can't think and rationalize things, still the soul. And I've said it today at the class, I repeat it, there's a because each person has a soul, and that soul is like a sun, and the Alzheimer's is like a cloud. Cloud obscuring the sun. Doesn't mean the sun is not there. So that soul is there. If you think that your partner, your husband, your wife has got that soul, then you really appreciate it. You, have, you give it more love. We'd like to pay tribute to all of the carers out there doing an amazing job supporting all of us, including you, babe.
As the boss would say, there's good people everywhere. You guys have a great week. We'll be back again next Sunday. You take care. Catch you later. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.